Today, Toyreal, we are sitting in Lobos Collectibles in Thornbury in Melbourne. We are catching up with Dennis, the owner, founder, proprietor, the big kahuna, everything that uh, every, everything that's anything in this store. It's uh, it's all down to mm. you. Amazing, eclectic, a uh, lot of collections in here. Um, tell me a little bit about the business. How, how long has Lobos been around? Um, I mean, the physical store's been around for nearly 15 years. Uh, this is our third location, so it's a third store. Mm -hmm. Generally, every time we move, it, it pretty much uh, doubles or triples in size, the location that we're at. That's just because we just keep on buying more toys, so we run out of space. Um, I think that's a problem that we're all familiar with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Collector's Worst Enemy is, um, is space itself. It's probably probably a good name for a super villain and just cr crunch your little space area down a little bit all the time. So um, yeah, we just keep on buying a lot more toys. We love toys uh, more than you can imagine and we might be into an another location in, in the distant future. But uh, for now, we're having a lot of fun here and um, it's been a long passion of mine. I mean, I've been collecting all my life since I was you know, five or six. I, you know, I, the earliest memories are just collecting comic books and buying toys and having a play with your mates with your uh, He-Man figures for me or uh, Arco the Other World or Ninja Turtles or Transformers, Star Wars figures, of course, what we grew up with. It's an amazing amount of toys and collectibles in here, all arranged with love. There's, it sort of feels like there's half of it is a, a show off of it and a bit of a flex on things that you have that are on display, but they are, they are mostly for sale anyway. Um, everything in the store is for sale, pretty much, except for some pieces that, you know, make up the furniture or, or hung on the wall. But every single toy in here is, is for sale. It does have that museum feel, like we do get people coming in sometimes and like, oh, is there an entry fee? Or, and I'm like, no, just come in. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's amazing you've got so many toys in here. I'm like, amazing or stupid? I said, I don't know which one's, <laughs> which one's relevant. Look, it's oh, like I enjoy all genres of toys, you know, it could be Jurassic Park, it could be My Little Pony, it could be Disney princesses, it could be Barbie. Um, we spend just as much time doing a Barbie cabinet display as we do with Star Wars. And uh, to be honest, we, we probably enjoy doing the Barbie one a little bit more because it's something we don't do so often. We tend to make sure that we theme everything in groups. So you don't have to go looking around the store for Star Wars items. If you're into Simpsons, we have an entire Simpsons cabinet and everything should be in that location. And we do alternate our cabinets. So sometimes we'll pack up an entire cabinet. Let's say that could be Jurassic Park. We'll pack it all up and we will do something uh, something else. It could be Silverhawks, it could be Dukes of Hazzard, it could be A-Team. And we'll try and theme the entire cabinet. I personally do like having a large enough collection where you can do an entire cabinet or one or two shelves of that particular toy line. I like to see the beauty of that whole color splash. And every toy line does have its colors. If you've got Ninja Turtles, you've got black and green. You've got Simpsons, it's that golden red and a little bit of black. So if you showed me three shades of color, I could tell you that's from that toy line and that's for that toy line. So every shade of color has a particular toy line that you can relate it to. Uh, to my earliest memories, remember we used to get those toy catalogs and it could just be Batman, 1989 Kenner for me. And I'd have a look at open up the catalog and there'd be every single piece from that toy line. And that particular toy line is generally black and gold. The Batman symbol, and I'd be like, oh my goodness. That look at that display, I wish I had that as a kid. So today, I can actually do that. So that was one of my great loves back in the past. And I'm like, look, look it's just displayed amazingly. And as kids, we knew we were never gonna get all that stuff. We, we got one item and we were super happy with that. But now that whole marketing part was fantastic for me. We really do put a lot of time into putting all of our toys on display. Like every single piece is put with meticulous manner. We will have a look at them and go, oh, that's not right. Let's move that car a bit higher up. Let's elevate this one. So we do stage all of our toys because we have such a love for them. So the retail toy scene in Australia is not necessarily looking great. There's, there's not a lot of toy stores left. Um, there's not a lot of places that you can go and see such a massive collection of you know, different toys all in one place and all from different eras. What does Lobos offer someone to come in the door and keep coming in the door? Firstly, we are interested to have a chat, know your name, who you are, what you collect. If you buy something in the store, great. If you don't, we don't mind either. We, we love to hear people's stories, their experiences with toys, what they collected as kids. Um, there's no pressure here ever to um, you know, purchase anything. We will talk to you for half an hour or so. And in the end, all of our customers, we're generally on first name basis. And 
we become friends over time. So it's a real community feel. Um, we, we do give things away to kids for free when they come in, um, you know, just to cheer them up and stuff like that. And um, we do do a lot of support for um, lo the local toy scene when it comes to artists and customizers. So we provide the venue um, at f free of charge and support them as much as possible. When somebody comes in and goes, oh, wow, that's a um, Ghostbusters cabinet. I remember that when I was a kid. I had the proton gun. I don't have it anymore. We moved, it got thrown out. So you get to hear everyone's story mm. and how they relate to that toy franchise, how they relate to that movie that the toys are generally based from or that book or the TV show. So the stories that you get from a display are amazing. And I suppose I've become addicted a little bit to hearing people's stories and their and when they're telling you those stories from their childhood, you really have this positive energy. I am a good story succubus. Good. I want to drag every single great story out of you because it makes me feel great and I have a great um, discussion with somebody. So that's one of the important things for me. I don't think I'm gonna be very successful in getting an answer to this question hmm. because you've said several times that you love everything. Yeah. If you had to pick your favorite toy line, I'm already, I'm already shaking my head. I know, I know. I'm already shaking my head. Um, there's marvellous bits and pieces with every toy line. And, and it's really, the when I think of a toy line, I think about the people that I've met in relation to that toy line and the stories that they've told me. And they're all wonderful because the toy, stories from your childhood, you, you have that little pocket of time for about 10 years where you're truly a child, you don't have to worry about what to cook, what to clean, your parents are doing everything for you, all you've got to worry about is playing with your toys, make sure you don't lose the weapons, put them all back together, or play with your mates. It's a wonderful period of time. Um, I probably haven't left that period too much. I always want to try and keep back to that moment because I understand what an important moment it is. But there probably wouldn't be a particular toy that I could pick from another because I really appreciate all of them. Uh, it'd be very hard for me. I, I, I wouldn't have this range. If you don't love it all, you just wouldn't be able to do it. Impossible. But you have created your own toys where there wasn't yeah. a toy line for particular properties that you like. This goes back to me flipping through catalogues, toy fair magazines and et cetera, those type of magazines through the 80s and 90s and just advertising through comic books and wherever else. And um, I mean, love of a movie called The Last Starfighter and also V, the TV series with the aliens. I watched them both when we were kids. Back in the day, both those toy lines were scheduled to have their own toy lines released. And they were advertised, they were in Toy Fair magazines, etc. But for some reason, at the last moment, they got cancelled. Mm. So those toy lines never got to see the light of day. We did get to see pictures and photographs of them. And after doing this for you know, nearly 15 years and about 13 years in, I thought to myself, what have I sort of left behind? And I thought, to myself, why can't we actually make some? And there was a couple of toy lines that I was a big fan of that the toy lines never got released. And I had, had a chat with a couple of, um, of our Melbourne toy customizers. Um, and I said, can you help me do this? And they said, yep, we can do it, Dennis. And um, we just worked very closely together and produced the last Starfighter toy lines that we did. Uh, we're up to season, series four now. And also we did so the they're, V they're, series, they're which is series one. ongoing series. They are limited runs. We're not, they're all made here in Melbourne. We take a great amount of pride with them, but we generally do about 100 sets. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, a, that's a lot for a limited run as well. It's a, it's a lot. Um, and, the, and look, half of them generally stay in Australia, but half of them do get posted overseas. So we do have a bit of a following now in the US, Germany, the UK, uh, France, I Italy. So we, we are posting those items uh, everywhere around the world. We do host events um, through a lovely gen gentleman by the name of Chipdar, and this is not a toy scene. They have uh, local and interstate artists that, that will be given a brief. Uh, we ran the Land Speeder project probably nearly a, a year or so ago, and that was a huge success where everybody got to make their own Land Speeder in their own vision, and we hosted that event here. 
all the sales of the land speeders and everything goes completely back to the artists. We will put them on display. I will sell them. I love all of them. I'd, I'd want to buy all of them if I could, but I don't. Every single dollar goes back to the artists. So we're very proud of that. We've hosted another one recently, which is called the Battle Cat Project. And that was an amazing event. And we um, look forward to helping these amazing artists and toy customizers in the future as well. You've carved out a lot of success as a bricks and mortar store without really having that much of an online presence. So it's very much a, a, you know, a made in Melbourne success story and people, people are coming and supporting the store huh. in Melbourne. Uh, yeah. People will interact with some of your social posts and the like, but generally they come into the store to purchase things, don't they? Yeah, generally, yeah, we are a vintage store and um, <laughs> people, our technology in here is very redundant. We don't have too much of it, just like the toys in the 70s and the 80s. We haven't really been a massive fan of websites and um, selling online or um, you know eBay or Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. We, uh, I tend to shy away from it. Yeah. I really like the interaction with the customer in person. I like to hear those stories. As I alluded before, I'm a little bit of a succubus. I love to get that positive energy from people and just suck that in. I can't do that online. It doesn't work. And um, just having that relationship. I've met hundreds of hundreds of amazing fans. I can call them friends. I'm very blessed. I have a lot of friends in the toy community and um, we all have a great time. I look forward to supporting them. And sometimes they tell me their problems and stuff like that. You know, I try and give them what I know as wisdom and I try and support them if it's not a toy related thing. We are a, a beautiful brick and mortar store. We take a lot of time and attention to detail to make sure the shop looks beautiful. We want people to experience that and I hope everybody, everybody can, if they're ever, come, ever in Melbourne, pop into Lobos, we're open, you know, seven days a week. So as I said to you, I really like to have that one-on-one -on -one chat with people and, and see how their day is. Um, maybe in five to 10 years, we may be in a bigger location, maybe again, tw you know, two or three times the size and have filled that location. And instead of nearly a hundred glass cabinets full of toys, maybe we'll have 300 glass cabinets full of toys. And um, yeah. It's, you know, just just keeping the passion going and the main thing is just to keep on meeting great great friends and great customers and having those chats with people and talking about their childhood what toys they grew up with you know what do they miss what are they looking for and if I can try and help them get that little piece of um, toy nostalgia back for them that'd be amazing so I've got this um, dream one day where it would be the size of the exhibition buildings here in Melbourne or Sydney wherever you're from like we're talking where they host the comic conventions and things like that. It would have to actually be maybe four or five times that, that size. And I would have a world called World Nostalgic. We would have different themes of this world where you could go to um, Nostalgic Toy World, Nostalgic Record World, Nostalgic Hi-Fi World, Nostalgic BMX World, Nostalgic, you know, there's Dodgem Cars, there's video clips playing on this side, there's Star Wars World internally. So every single part of the complex would be a themed area where you'd have your own themed toys and it, everything would be dressed up beautifully like Marvel section, the DC section, but, um, but also do things that I've got a lot of passions like with LPs and records and old vintage BMXs and hi-fi equipment, which uh, there's none of it in the store. Some of those things take up way more space. Yeah, space. like vintage cars, let's get a Batmobile, a DeLorean in there, <laughs> a Ghostbusters, Ecto-1, and just have this amazing, you know, world nostalgic. But, um, I mean, that's what I dream of because we really love popular culture and we love vintage toys. And, um, I mean, that would be an amazing dream. So if anyone's got a spare, spare couple of billion dollars, I'm happy to start the process. Dennis, thank you so much for thank you. meeting us today. My and, pleasure. And thank you so much for setting aside some space and some time in your store to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, you can find Lobos on uh, Facebook. Come along, support the business, like their content. Every single like helps. Check out the community events that they sponsor as well. Thank you everyone for checking out Toy Reel on YouTube. Um, please do be sure to like our channel, comment on our videos and subscribe to find more content in the future.